what is dysfunction? You hear a lot of things about dysfunction. You hear a dysfunction junction. People say all the time that all relationships are dysfunctional, that all people or all families are dysfunctional. There's dysfunction everywhere. Dysfunction is in one simple word, chaos. It is chaos. And we live in a realm of chaos. So when there's dysfunction on a nuclear level, it's just saying that chaos is out of control or we are out of control because we are allowing ourselves to become part of that chaos or we're tapping into that chaos. When is dysfunction too much? When does dysfunction need to be checked? You know, when you get to the place where you're verbally abusing someone else or you're physically abusing someone else, at that point, at both those points or before those points, you should recognize that the dysfunction has surpassed the chaos that you live in. The dysfunction now has taken you over. And dysfunction and chaos are nothing more than energy. Is negative energy on a molecular level. It's like big. When you are so negative and your energy is like, you know, you're walking around with this ball, you know, it's like Pokemon, you're walking around with this big ball of energy and it's all darkness and you feel like it, you feel like your chest is bursting, like you can't handle the, you know, the, the anxiety, you can't handle the worry, you can't handle the doubt or the fear that has manifested in your life and that has taken you over. Stop. Take a moment, chill and realize that you do have control. You do not have to remain out of control. You know, we live in a realm of chaos, it's obvious, because we have traffic lights, we have laws, we have the judicial system, we have attorneys, we have police officers. All these things are designed in this realm to contain the chaos. Imagine if we did not have those things in place. Imagine if we did not have laws and rules. You know, it would be like the wild, wild west. People would just shoot whoever they wanted to shoot, bury who they wanted to bury, wherever they wanted, and get away with it. But because we've gotten more efficient at containing the chaos in such a way that groupthink is affected by it, it does not mean that individualistic um, chaos does not occur. Most people have chaos. We are duality. There are two sides of every coin, right? There are two sides of every human being. There's a good side and there's what you call the bad side, but really is the side of you that is out of control. Everyone has two sides, but everyone does not have the ability or recognize that they possess the ability to control that side of them that they allow to take them over. Chaos is real. And when you say dysfunction, when you hear that word flowing in your relationship or flowing out of your mouth, you need to stop and realize that it needs to stop and it can end. The dysfunction without does not have to reflect within. You are peace. I'm not telling you your peace because I want you to believe your peace. I'm saying your peace because you do have the peace within. Think about those moments when you're not feeling chaotic. Think about those moments when you feel at peace. Think about those moments when you have clarity of mind and soundness of mind. Those are the moments when peace is reigning, when peace has taken you over. When you choose to, to participate in the chaos is because of several different reasons, right? A lot of people were raised in chaos. A lot of us came from chaotic households. A lot of us came from abusive households or we were in, you know, we came from a culture that promoted abuse or chaos. You know, there are a lot of cultures that do that. There's a lot of cultures that permit hidden, that permit, you know, beatings, that permit, you know, corporal punishment. There's a lot of things that are allowed within the context of a cultural context. And then there's learned behavior. How many of you grew up in households or environments where you witnessed someone, you know, being mean to someone or hitting someone or verbally abusing someone, cursing them out, calling them out of their names and stuff like that. That's another form of chaos, the chaos that was in your environment that you grew up in. Another chaos or chaotic manifestation is within yourself. You may have been suppressed. You may have rep been repressed by your parents, by yourself, by situations, by school. A lot of, a lot of people 
really get bent on the shit when they go to school because children can be cruel because children do not understand the impact of their words or the impact of their actions. And a lot of people suffer because they have gone through traumatic experiences at the hands of other people who were not knowledgeable, who were ignorant. But here you are, regardless of which of those touch your life, you're here. You know, I see people on the time on TV. I, I don't really watch television, but I see people on TV in the past and, you know, they talk about who they are now and, and how this is who they are. If you believe that who you are is chaos, then all you can deliver is chaos. If you believe that who you are is peace, then what you do is gravitate towards peace. You can disengage from the chaos. You have that ability. You truly can. I did, and it's a constant struggle, is a constant flow, but it's a spiritual one. It's something that relies something outside of yourself, something greater than you to recognize that what you are is not chaotic. Just because you do bad things or you do things that you do not want to do does not mean you're a bad person. And I talk about that in my video, your behavior and character are two different people, are two different things. When you feel that you've gone too far, you have to check yourself. Don't wait till somebody else checks you before you check yourself. If somebody else checks you and you don't understand why they're checking you, then you're probably gonna end back up here again doing the same thing you've done. You know, people talk about generational curses and they talk about cycles and they talk about habits and how habits become, you know, this cycle of life where you keep on going around like a dog chasing your tail. Stop chasing your tail. At some point when you're doing this, you got to do stop and recognize that at any moment in time, you have the power and ability to stop the action that you're participating in right now. The first order to disengage from chaos is to recognize that you are chaotic. The first thing to recognize is you're chaotic. And the second thing is to recognize that you have a choice. You don't have to remain chaotic. You don't have to choose to be a part of the chaos. You can disengage if you want to. What does disengagement from chaos look like? I mentioned the opposite of chaos, peace. What did you like to wake up in the morning and your first thought not be one of worry, doubt, anxiety, and fear, but instead of gratitude, of celebration, of anticipation, of just pure joy? That's what disengaging from dysfunction and chaos looks like. And dysfunction is like cancer. When, you know, they say hurt people hurt people, they say, you know, who you are is a reflection of your environment. All those things that you've heard, is, they, they're true. So the moment you disengage from dysfunction or chaos, it might be difficult at first to realize that this is actually something that can last. But doesn't it mean that it's worth taking a try or making an effort to see if you can? Every action can stop with your thoughts. Every action begins with your thought. Change your thoughts and you can change your actions. My name is Ingrid Felton. Thank you as always for visiting my YouTube channel. I hope that there was some value in what I, I just told you or brought to you. Um, please continue to subscribe to the videos, You know, like the videos, leave your comments and tell others and bring others to the YouTube channel. Um, I, you know, I enjoy bringing this knowledge to you is these are things that I'm learning on, on my journey, on my spiritual journey and the work that I do. And I hope that you can find some value in it and that you can apply it to your life. Remember, you have the ability to disengage from the chaos. Whatever you're in, whatever is going on, you can stop it. You can change, you can transform, but the transformation starts within you. You know, like the matrix said, like the little kid with the spoon said to Neil, don't try to bend the spoon because that's impossible. Instead, try to bend yourself. Bye.